And um, this particular presentation is called You Become What You Envision. And um, I just want to give you a little bit background. Why are we doing this? Um, as you all know, the, um, the, uh, the quarantine phase and, you know, um, it's, it's rather kind of, um, disrupting to the com community. And on top of that, at CPS, the, uh, the, uh, the online work is really, you know, kind of frustrating, not working so well. And so uh, basically, you know, our community sort of take the matter in our own hands and try to create um, different workshops and try to establish a certain type, kind of routine for our community. And, um, you know, um, I really appreciate uh, Sharon's team uh, who, you know, um, joined us on this effort and provided this um, virtual workshop. And next month, she will have another presentation for us and that is particular on parenting. So I hope you will look for that one as well. And uh, on top of that, I just want to, um, again, share with you about why I feel particularly this vir virtual workshop is important. Um, as many of you know, most of the, uh, the, uh, the teaching students, you know, they view the summer experience um, heavily and those are about, you know, pretty much the only opportunities they have to build on their resumes, to, you know, to develop their, you know, um, extracurriculars and uh, summer research programs and, you know, um, you know uh, in addition to the TJ work. Um, at this point, you know, a lot of the summer courses, you know, is becomes unknown and some of the summer internships also becomes unknown. Um, but, you know, I, I feel like I, I want to provide or push out as much information as possible in front of our community. And so you can perhaps learn from Sharon's group and see what we can do as a whole community to build um, this is a supportive network for our students. Um, again, um, this kind of experience is going to be very, very important. They are not something that you can learn from the book. Um, I talked about this in the past uh, in our TJ um, events. You know, um, as many of you know, um, the teenager phase is actually considered the um, second birth. You know, there. You know, according to the uh, the famous um, Maslow's. Uh, development theory, there's three stages of, of birth, the physical, the mental, emotional, and the spiritual. So in this second phase, um, our teenagers, they are going to, you know, form their own identity, their own unique qualities. And this kind of activity that Outreach provides is actually the platform that will help our students to develop mentally and emotionally, and to define who they are and to become who, what they're envisioned. So anyway, I'm going to turn the table to Sharon and her team. And um, the students are going to have their own stories to share with the audience. And it's going to be fully packed and it's going to be a lot of fun. Um, anyway, enjoy. Thank you, everybody. Thank you. Thank Sharon, you so again um, for the great introduction. Um, thank you so much for attending this event today. We're just really, really excited. So the workshop, it's You Become What You Envision. It's about, it's actually about what, a little bit about self-confidence, but it's also a little bit about um, mentorship and guidance and vision development. So it's, it's a lot, it's about a lot of different topics. And so here we have um, for our agenda, um, Yuan did a really nice introduction, and our team is going to uh, talk about a little bit about our history, and then our students will also introduce some of the programs, the things that we do, and other opportunities. And of course, um, me and uh, Richard, uh, who's right next to me, we will be talking a little bit about Branch House mission, and then we will have more like a um, Q&A type of thing. Uh, where our students, college students, and of course our uh, high school students can talk about um, some of their experiences with French Out. And then, of course, at the end, we will leave some time for people to ask questions. 
So before we start, I want to introduce our presenters. So there are 10 of us here, but also um, within our, I guess, audience today, there are also other branch house students. So thank you so much for coming to support us as a group. So um, there's me, and just in case you don't know me, uh, I'm Dr. Yu Shen Wu, I'm the co-founder of Branch Out. Um, and I'm also the, the chair of Harvard Asian American Alumni uh, here in DC. And with us is uh, Mr. Richard Wayne. Do you want to say hi? Hi, how are you everyone? <laughs> uh, he is um, one of the, I guess, committee members for FCPS Minority Achievement Oversight. Um, so he's doing a lot of, or he has been doing a lot of community related um, activities. He's very active, um, also a uh, board member of TCFA. And we also have um, our high school, sorry, high school students, as you can see, as young as ninth grade, um, all the way to 12th grade. So we have Victoria, TJ, Songhan, McLean, Angela, TJ, Forrest, TJ, and Hannah, Madison. And then in terms of college students, we have Mary, Daniel, graduated from TJ, and then Alice uh, graduated from Chantilly High School um, there at Harvard, Dartmouth, and UC Berkeley. Um, so, uh, yeah, if we can mute ourselves or if Angela can mute uh, the audience, that would be great. So, let's start. Um, Forrest, do you want to talk a little bit about our history? Yeah, so uh, Branch Out was founded basically in uh, um, 2015 after Dr. Wu and uh, her husband uh, had this, uh, had taken on the initiative by uh, Dr. James Ryan about the importance of STEM education. So uh, 2016 was the first summer of the actual Branch Out mentoring program. We had about uh, 20 students to the DC Charter School, and through that we saw a lot of improvements such as um, a 3.49 percentile increase in the testing of math, as well as a 13 percentile uh, increase uh, above the control group in math as well for these uh, mentees. And then uh, the next year, 2017, was a very big year as well. Branch Out had gotten a lot of other endorsements from uh, such as Congressman Ted Liu, um, as well as getting the 501c uh, nonprofit title. Uh, and this year, we had about uh, 60 students partnering with FCPS and other charter schools, as well as some other community centers and um, homeless shelters. In 2018, we had uh, we increased even more through our uh, different branch outing and marketing strategies, and we had gotten it up to about 100 students serving both in FCPS and MCPS and uh, different community centers across both. And then uh, 2019, we had our largest number so far, 150 students serving in uh, nine locations uh, in Virginia and DC. Uh, all these locations included uh, different community centers and schools uh, for credit recovery programs. And through this, pro through this time, we also had a lot of um, student-run projects and student-run organizations as well as sub-organizations that targeted different other groups as well. Great. Um, so just wanted to make sure we have um, we're following our agenda. So thank you, Forrest, for sharing with uh, the audience about our history. So next, I'm going to ask our students to talk about um, the programs that we offer. So um, I know we have lots of different projects. Um, so many students are involved in all these different um, activities. So maybe, I don't know, Victoria, do you want to start by talking a little bit about what you do and some of the projects that you're helping with? Okay, can you hear me? Yes. Okay, so hi, I'm Victoria. Um, I'm in ninth grade and I am the director of social media right now. So I meet the social media team. So Facebook and Instagram, um, we work on that. And whenever we have a new project, opportunity, or new information, the social media team is always the first to get on it so that all of our followers know about this. Um, additionally, we also have some other projects going on like the online tutoring program, which I helped out on. And this is basically where students can sign up to help other students and they meet online together, which helps the mentees gain an understanding of the topic while mentors also get service hours 
and get to build on their communication skills and leadership skills. Um, additionally, we also have an online web concert coming up where uh, people from all over the world will be playing music, and I'm also helping out on that right now. Great, great. Hannah, um, she's our intern. Do you want to talk a little bit about uh, the projects that you are working on? Anna, your mic is muted. Sorry. Okay. So a big project that I'm working on right now is our Unity concert. So it's a live web concert made of student performers from around the world, like places from Valencia, Spain, to New York, to Toronto. So our concert will be taking place on June 6th. You can find more information about our concert on our website and our social media platforms like Instagram and Facebook. Great. Songhan? Hey, hi everyone. My name is Songhan. Um, I'm a sophomore at McLean High School and right now I'm the director of education of Branch Out. Right now I'm leading the concert that Victoria and Hannah have talked about. Um, I'm working together to connect all these people and you know, overall make a good experience for everyone during these hard times. Um, I've also been helping out on other projects um, during the year, such as our applications and um, other opportunities at our community centers. Um, and yeah. Great. And Daniel, I mean, you are in so many different uh, projects. You were involved with interviews. You helped train our students. Uh, of course, you were our co-president last year. Uh, you help out with our fundraising and of course the ivy league project can you talk a little more about like you know these programs and projects yeah of course um so i guess i i can start off with the ivy league project um so basically what we were doing with that um was that us branch out students we were helping with the sign-in process at one of harvard's fireside chats in dc where Craig Allen was a speaker. He's the president of US-China Business Council. Um, and it was just a rare experience as high schoolers to come into contact with really influential people. There were CEOs there, military officers, lawyers, researchers, people very much at the top of their field. And it was a good experience to see how professionals interacted, watching them network, exchange business cards, connect on LinkedIn, um, and actually, in the picture on the slide, the bottom right, um, we actually got to speak with Mr. Allen after the meeting, talking about Branch Out and giving Branch Out some exposure. So that was um, one of the things that I was a part of. I was also involved in um, training sessions. So I was a, basically responsible for teaching mentors, how to mentor, as well as um, being a team leader, organizing fundraising events, um, yeah. Yeah, lots of different things, right? Lots so, of stuff. <laughs> so Daniel uh, graduated from TJ and now he's a student at Dartmouth. We will interview you uh, in about 10, 15 minutes or so. So anything else we missed? Just wanted to make sure. Okay. Uh, Songhan, anything else you want to add? Sure. Um, so I just want to talk a little bit about our other projects. So given the information that you guys have probably already heard of, um, everyone might know that Branch Out is a nonprofit student organization. And while that's not wrong, there's really so much more to us than just volunteering. Uh, since we always want the best for our mentors and mentees, so much of our program is geared towards constantly improving the service. So um, we found a lot of ways to create special events for our mentors to connect and be inspired. So um, one point is the DC trash pickup event that we hosted last year. We got over 50 mentors to clean up the National Mall and we also worked with the National Park Service as well. And it was just a really fun time to, you know, help the environment, but at the same time, even talk with veterans and just get to know a bit of our community better. And yeah, we really um, extended our reach. And um, another thing that I'd like to add is our, celebration event. 
So that happens at the end of each year where, and it's a special time where the mentors get together and we um, celebrate our achievements that we um, did over the summer and it's a really fun time. So here, this, um, the pictures on the, the picture on the left is um, a few mentors getting their awards for the end of the year. So um, that's also something that's pretty special about us. We have, we're a certifier for the presidential service award. Um, so yeah, there's a lot of unique opportunities. And on the right, you can, uh, that's our innovator team. So um, I think I can let Angela talk a little bit more about that, but um, I forgot to mention earlier that I'm also a team leader of the curriculum design team for innovator. Um, and I'll turn it over to Angela for now. Hey, okay, okay, I can talk about um, Innovator. So um, Innovator is pretty much um, like a relatively new program um, compared to Branch Out. And it's a year round program that um, we meet remotely through Zoom. And our mission is to create like educational resources to help um, students study and stuff. And currently we're making an app that um, like to prepare people for the SOLs. And currently we have three teams, a developers team that will code everything and design the app, a curriculum design team that uh, creates questions for the subjects and a, a marketing team that promotes our application to the public. And our team, we've like, even though we're pretty new, we like had, we made a lot of improvements. We won a third place in the congressional app challenge. And we also have uh, many more plans to do, to make more apps for uh, education and even um, climate change and ocean awareness. So, yeah. Great. So as you can see, we do lots of things and the student leaders, they do lots of different things. So if you are part of Ren Chow, you don't want to just be uh, a tutor or a mentor, you want to help out. Uh, we strongly encourage you to contact any of our group leaders to express your desire to um, to join, right? Because we are always looking for members to help out. And, and so like, before our session started, I was just talking to uh, our students, the student leaders here. Um, so for example, Angela, who just shared her experience on Innovator, you know, when she joined, she was a ninth grader, uh, TJ student, you know, very capable, but a bit shy. But look at her, right? Look at how she's presenting information about the innovator and she's actually the host of this meeting today. Um, so it's, she has come a long way in terms of her growth. And Song Han, who shared a lot about our different uh, projects, she's also in, in these two pictures, uh, actually just one. Um, she, when she first applied to branch out, she actually applied to be a leader, a student leader, but because she was younger, also ninth grader, uh, you know, we really didn't know much about her. We overlooked her leadership application, but that did not stop us from spotting her because during her first day, two days at Wellston Community Center, she was doing an amazing job. And Marina, who was um, the leader, student leader at the site, saw her and she immediately talked to us. She's like, there's this student you have to meet, you know, she's great. I think you should talk to her. So I talked to her and, you know, it turned out that she's this, again, very capable person, very organized. And we just, we have been, you know, having her running all the different projects. So just, you know, little things like that. So basically we're looking for students who are proactive. Um, I mean, there are ways, right? We can also just wait for people to discover us, but in the real world, um, that doesn't always happen, right? So uh, being proactive, it's the message that we're trying to send to our students. Um, also being professional, it's another thing that we really care a lot about. But what is really unique about Branch Out is that I call it the comfort zone expansion project, where we go from me, our home, like usually you have a family of three or four or five individuals, how you go from that tiny circle all the way to the school community, right? So you're probably part of the school club or whatever team. And then from there, you're reaching out to regional. So where you're working with students from different schools and globally. So with Brunch Out, um, within the 10 students we have here today, how many schools do you come from? <laughs> you know, already like, I don't know how many, right? Like three or four or five. 
And then um, we actually have students coming from four different states. I know the innovator team always talks about Ziming, who is a student actually at a top private high school um, in New York, in Long Island, right? So you're also interacting with people outside of the DMV area. I think we also have a student from Chicago applied this year. Um, a few years ago, we had some, a, a few students from uh, another part of Virginia, not the DC area. And then of course, with our expansion to a Howard County, we're getting you know, students from a different part of Maryland, not just Montgomery County, but Howard County. So um, that's, that's how we are expanding ourselves in terms of our vision, because our comfort zone defines how far we see, basically. So um, look at these students, how well they work together, you know, from different schools, from different cultures, different subjects, right, different interests, and now they're here. So I think within Branch Out, we have uh, branched out ourselves, and then we're just so glad to see that our students have branched out as, as well with us. So like in 2015, when we first started, we, uh, we got the idea from a fireside chat from um, Harvard, um, Dean of Harvard Graduate School of Education, uh, Dean Ryan, former Dean, he's now president at, at UVA. And so he talked about how, you know, there are students who really need to help with uh, STEM education. And so we thought, okay, we work with this really bright students, a group of bright students. So there must be something that we can do to fulfill that, that gap or that need. So we started out with a very, I guess, simple mission, but then slowly we found ourselves uh, branching outside of our comfort zone. We talked to a lot of school officials. We talked to DC charter schools. We learned about all the different requirements, all the you know school board uh, policies. And then from there, we reached out to branch out oh. CPS and then homeless shelters. And then we went to MCPS and then Howard County and then from there, and now this year we're doing this global concert where um, our student leaders are interacting with students from other states and even other countries. So even within Branch Out, we have really, really Branch Out. <laughs> so uh, I'm always learning from our students. And um, if you truly care about, you know, branching out yourself, this is the right place for you. So um, I guess, if I guess I'll try to see, is, is Eric here? Angela, is Eric here? Yes, I am. Great, okay. <laughs> so I guess we can start um, with our portion, but is there anything? Okay, so here is a, a picture of us from 2018. That's a, a pretty big team already, but we will show you the 2019 team uh, as well. But I'm going to start with our very first cohort uh, Alice, uh, she joined us in 2016. That's when we had 20 students. So Alice, do you want to share with the audience a little bit about who you are? Yeah, and what sure. You yeah. Um, can you guys hear me? Yes. Okay. Um, I guess um, I started with Dr. Wu in 2016 when she first, I guess, wanted to implement the idea of starting Branch Out. It was a much smaller program at the time. Um, <laughs> and then there were only about 20 students and Dr. Wu was the first person who encouraged me to kind of grasp a leadership role in the program. And that was probably one of the first times I've ever had kind of um, more authority in a, outside of a school um, organization setting. And I think that was super helpful in helping me develop um, problem solving skills, leadership skills that I've applied um, even now. So now I'm a, wow, junior in college, um, uh, studying data science and molecular and cell biology. And although I don't work in tutoring students anymore, um, a lot of the skills that I've learned and branch out, such as being a leader, being able to communicate with other people, working in a team. They're all um, really important skills and attributes I've gained in helping me navigate 
college. So that's from interacting with professors to joining clubs and events and um, getting research. Those are all um, skills that I've, um, that Branch Out has definitely helped me gain. Yeah. Yeah, so I picked this picture, the one on the left. So there's Alice on the left and then there's Billy. Uh, he graduated from Sidwell. He's at UPenn now. And there's Emily. Uh, she graduated from TJ. Uh, she's at Columbia. And then there is, um, wait, there's another Emily. And she's at Wake Forest now. So these are our students, right? So even the management team came from a very diverse background. And in the second picture, we have you, Alice, with Ethan, also graduated from TJ. Uh, he's at Cornell now. So again you know we have a very like unique uh team where people are into different subjects backgrounds private versus public uh and then you know maryland versus virginia great so in 2017 that's when eric joined us so eric do you want to talk a little bit about your experience yeah um can you all hear me Cool. I'm Eric, um, TJ grad, graduated in 2018, um, was really into computer science in high school, as well as piano. Um, and then now I'm studying at Harvard computer science with an interest in um, machine learning and kind of making that more efficient. Um, and I think for branch out, um, when I was studying, like really interested in tech in high school, um, I kind of was out of a crossroads of like, I knew I was interested in tech, but I wasn't really, um, I was wondering like why, like I really like wanted to go into this field um, besides from like the pure technical aspects, besides from coding and, and the math parts. And I think Dr. Wu um, and Branshaw as a whole really helped me kind of realize that I really love like surprising and delighting others and teaching others and really having an impact on that. And I think that's, been a huge part of me going um, forward since I've joined Branch Out. And just discovering and speaking to the students has really made me realize um, that like the inspiration of which I want to pursue tech is to help others. Um, and I definitely have a lot more com comments later, but um, this is kind of a brief intro of where I'm at. Great. So again, looking at this picture on the left, we have um, Kevin Son from Oakton. Uh, he's at NYU. We have James Gao, he's at UIUC, and of course you, and then we have, um, oh my god, Austin <laughs> from McLean, he's at Yale. Uh, we have Anshu, he's at, oh my god, what school? Randolph, Randolph Macon. Macon. Yeah, and then of course we have Daniel right here, right? So we got three TJ, <laughs> and then two McLean and one Oakton. And then here, this picture uh, at the top, this was another Harvard event where we talked about, remember, we, we, that's where we show um, Looking for Luke, um, the film, um, you know, this teen who, uh, you know, well, I guess we have younger audience here, so we will not go into detail, but I think it was a really good experience for Eric, where you got to host the event. I think there were over 200 people there that day, and so you were nervous that day, I could tell, but you, know, you did a, a wonderful job. Great. So the next we have Daniel, who has been with us for three years. Daniel, when you want to talk a bit about your experience? Yeah, sure. Um, so I guess I'll sort of introduce myself since I haven't totally introduced myself yet. Um, so my name is Daniel Shen, class of 2019, graduated from TJ, currently a first year at Dartmouth, interested in studying biology and sociology, um, interested in a career in medicine. And during my time at Branch Out, I was a mentor, and then I was also a curriculum designer. My second year, I became a team leader and eventually became one of Branch Out's co-presidents. And during my time at Branch Out, um, I volunteered at Center City Charter Schools in DC, working with elementary and middle school students at Justice High School with their Algebra One Credit Recovery Program, working with high school students, and then James Lee Community Center, working with elementary school students. And Kind of looking back at all of my time at Branch Out, um, I think the three things that I've taken away with me to college have been communication and confidence, stepping outside my bubble, and also understanding the importance of reflection. 
Great. Yeah, so look, um, all the different roles you have, right? Like you were, uh, I guess you were our keynote speaker and then you were being interviewed. And I mean, you just did a lot of different things. So yeah, really proud of you. Okay, now we have Forrest, um, who also joined us back in 2017 and he's still with us. And you want to share a little bit about your story? Yeah, so uh, hi, I'm Forrest. I'm a current junior at uh, Thomas Jefferson High School. I joined in 2017. I think that was uh, summer before ninth grade. Uh, you could see me small on the left side. Um, so currently I am the director of journalism, but besides that, I also uh, do a lot of things. So for director of journalism, I currently work with the team to uh, write articles and uh, do also uh, video journalism and also um, besides that, I have also been working closely with the management team on application stuff on the online tutoring program, uh, which I currently am leading, and then also some other logistics here and there. Um, so branch out for me is something that I was heavily invested in for the past few summers. Like every single summer I had at least, I think one or two weeks that I fully dedicated my time to, as well as time out of season. Um, so I think it's just like, in the beginning of high school, I was kind of a, uh, a lost child. Like I didn't really have any motivation to continue, you know, pursuing any leadership. Like I was like, oh, why should I focus on leadership when, uh, you know, I I'm struggling with grades and all of that stuff. But it seemed to be like, you know, this branch out gave me an opportunity to expand um, my communication skills, my leadership skills, working with other people from other counties, other schools, and working with uh, administration really like gave me a new opportunity to find what I might be gifted at. Um, it's like this, uh, this opportunity of like having the time to, you know, uh, to be the leader, practice being a leader on different student-led projects that can actually make an impact, that you can actually like uh, see the impact in your own eyes. It's something that's uh, very re rewarding, and um, I'm excited to continue doing yeah, so if you can see the picture right from 2017, I, I did this on purpose, right? Like you were so uh, young looking and look at how mature you are as our reporter uh, in our celebration event. There were, what, about 300 people there, over 300 people there yeah. uh, last fall. So that was our biggest event. So as you can see, um, Branch Out has grown, right, again, from 20 students to 150, from, you know, that tiny little training session to over 300 people in, in the audience. So, um, yeah, you guys have been wonderful, and we, you know, Richard and I, we can't uh, say thank you enough for your, uh, all, all the things that you guys have done. So now, I guess we want to take some time to um, ask you guys questions um and i guess you know for the audience i think it would be good to share with them and of course you know if, if the audience if you have any questions specific questions feel free to type it into the chat box uh, maybe angela you can uh, just say hi so that they know where the chat box is just in case um so that uh, and then angela can let uh, me or whoever know um so what the questions are so we can or yeah just let me know so i can um ask the questions but i'm gonna ask you know, are mainly now the four um, speakers, what made you join Branch Out? And you can say things like, my mom made me, okay? <laughs> like as simple as that. that, that works, okay? So whoever wants to start. Alice? <laughs> um, I think since it was like the first year that you started anything, um, I was looking for something to do over the summer and I didn't know exactly what I wanted to do. Um, my mom was like, hey, this one person posted on WeChat. Um, she's looking for some people to do tutoring. And I was like, okay, I'll just like submit an application. And then um, I met Dr. Wu um, online through the interview. And um, afterwards she reached out to me. She said, hey, you should also become a leader in our program. You're also one of the older people in our program I was like okay that's I'm I'm down for that and then it just and then I worked over the summer for the summer of 2016 yeah great Boris what about you uh, 
I'm not exactly sure, but uh, I was, I, I think it was uh, my mom kind of just told me that you were doing this thing and then uh, I had nothing better to do. So I just tried it out. Um, but like, it's, yeah, it's something that like, I think I, at first thought was pretty insignificant, but it kind of evolved to this. It's pretty cool. Daniel? Yeah, my mom. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, yeah, my mom also found a message on WeChat and she was like, oh, Daniel, you should try this out. And it was my, it was my sophomore summer and I, I did not want to do SAT prep, so I'd much rather volunteer and work with kids. And sort of by volunteering, I found that I really enjoyed working with children, working with high school students, just watching people get excited about STEM. And that sort of progressed as I took on more responsibilities and I just developed as a person. Um, Great, Eric? Yeah, I think similar to the others, definitely a little of parental like pressure or like just giving me the opportunity to, but also I did know Ethan and Andrew Wayne um, and, and a few others, even Michael. Oh, wow. These are, these are some of my good friends from a few years ago. Brings back really good memories. And, and they were part of the first cohort and they had just great reviews of Branch Out. And I think that's a common sentiment is like you, you come here and you meet so many great people and you, like, you really want to stay because of the people. Yeah. Well, um, so sometimes like, I know parents can be annoying, right? But <laughs> sometimes they can be right too. So we want to thank your parents for encouraging you guys to, to participate and join in Branch Out. So we got uh, a few questions from the audience. So I'm gonna ask um, the questions from uh, the audience first. So one person said, how many hours um, do you guys need to spend weekly on a weekly basis for branch out related activities. So maybe we can answer that on two different levels, right? One is if you're just doing the summer thing and one is like maybe our, the more team uh, management team thing. So whoever wants to answer that. Sohan, you want to answer that question? Yeah, sure. Um, so first I'll talk a little bit about um, the commitment over the summer. So last summer I was a mentor at Wilson Community Center, an afternoon mentor. So every day during the weekday, I would go um, starting at one o'clock and then I'd get off at five o'clock and from Monday to Friday, so that make 20 hours per week. But I did know that there were a few mentors that did full day. So um, that would be eight hours per day, wow. Um, and then that would be about 40 hours per week. So volunteering itself does take up a bunch of time but it honestly depends on how much you want to commit how much you want to give back to the community um and really it's just up to your schedule um as for right now since things are a bit different um just with managing um you know all the projects that i have i typically take about at least one hour per day um but it's a lot less than what would have been if um our season was in person yeah, so we asked for at least one week of commitment all the way to what, like six weeks-ish, depending on how long we have. So that's during the branch house season. Yeah. Um, okay, so now this question is going to be, uh, I think a lot of parents are really interested in this question. How do you think branch out helped you get into a good school? <laughs> so that's for our college students um i can take a shot uh i'm going to alter the question a tiny little bit um because i have no idea about how you know like admissions works mm -hmm. but i do have some idea i think as a college student as a sophomore now <clears throat> on what college life is like and and the caliber of and the quality of you know student organizations on ca college campuses versus high school campuses so I'm going to speak to you a little on the things that I think the most important parts of branch out that I took from my experience. And I think there's three different parts that really stood out to me reflecting back on branch out. The first is it's a professional organization as, and it's not like any other high school club um, that you do, especially at TJ or even most other high schools where, you know, you go there for fun at the end of the day. Um, 
And sure, it might be like competition, like math team is always very competitive, but there's always this pretense um, and the context hanging in the air of that this is a high school thing. Um, and so it's not quote unquote real. It's, it's you know, like there are student, there are proctors, there's teachers helping you. Um, it's not like completely student driven. Um, and the impact is really constrained towards your core cohort. Um, whereas branch out is a lot more of trying to see how much impact you can have on the community as a whole and genuinely acting as a professional organization. So for the students we mentor, we're not some you know, high school program. We're, we're just a program that's trying to help them learn. Um, I think that's really empowering, especially being on the flip side. Um, now at Harvard, I think a lot of the clubs I'm in, the biggest difference um, going from high school um, to college is that that mindset change because now there's no room for excuses and that you can't say, oh, today I'm tired or um, like we don't have to go like 100% on this project because, you know, we can, we're just a high school club. And I think going through branch out really prepared me for that mindset. And actually at the college level, you do see students who um, didn't have that experience in high school, who didn't have such a rigorous training, kind of like peter out or felter um, and stumble in some places. And, and at those, at that high caliber level, that's when you distinguish between the people who you know, continue on doing this work and, and who just drop out of the club. Um, my second point is opportunity for growth. So even though um, Branch Out is a professional organization, I think it's also very unique in that you don't really have as much flexibility and like in other clubs as much as Branch Out. Because um, for example, if you really want to join a professional organization, you could join, I don't know, something crazy like the Bill and Melinda Gates Foundation. But then your impact in that organization is gonna be tiny because there's so much structure, there's so much hierarchy going around. But at Branch Out, no matter if you join as a volunteer on the, on, in the summer or on the management team, if you want to drive an impact, I think it's super easy to. And that's, I think, the one of the best parts about Branch Out and that if you have an idea and it's good, we, we're more than willing to try to help you um, get that across. And finally, the resources and community, I think is great. Because even though we're professional on the outside, um, you know, all of our interactions are just like any other professional organization. On the inside, I think, again, that community aspect is, is really important and that we're, we always have resources for each other. Dr. Wu is always very helpful. Um, and the student cohort kind of internally builds up experience that really lasts for like a lifetime. Um, and I think that's like the three main points. So does opportunity for growth the professional organization experience and also the resources in, in the internal and organization. Great, great, great. Thank you so much, Eric, for sharing. Anyone else? If not, we can move on to the next question. Um, people have a lot of good questions. Uh, one is a really easy one. How did you sign up for this wonderful program? Thank you for asking this question. Um, so, uh, I guess we will talk about it towards the end where Victoria, maybe you can share a little bit and hopefully I will get to play our video clip too, to kind of share with our parents a little bit more about Branch Out. Uh, the other really interesting question that I, uh, someone sent me, which is really good, is I noticed more girls <laughs> on the leadership team. <laughs> is it because boys are not as mature? Um, what do you think? Sohan, do you have any insights on this? Um, I think um, regarding this question, honestly, when we're picking our people for um, the leadership team, it's not more about gender, but rather um, what you do and how you've shown yourself to be um, a good role model and somebody who's willing to give back to the community. So we definitely don't uh, gender discriminate, but we do want to, um, you know, focus on how the leadership um, person or candidate can bring an impact to the community. Yeah, so for like 20, what, 2018, our leaders, co-presidents were uh, Daniel and Angela. So one TJ, one Wooden. You know, one boy, one girl. And then last year, um, our leaders were Lawrence from Oakton, 
uh, Marina from McLean, and then and, and for I guess our Maryland, we have Michelle Liu. Um, so I think we, you know, we like Songhan said, we don't try to discriminate, but we're looking for someone who is proactive, uh, who is able to um, reach out. They don't have to be super vocal, but they just have they have to show that they really care about this. So I think even this year, I mean, we have. Uh, Jonathan, who's not here today, right? We have Jingma, who's not here. Like, we got lots of guys who are just not here today. So, yeah, we, we do try to have a, a pretty mixed uh, cohort whenever possible. Uh, also, someone asked about our plan for the summer. So, I guess maybe um, later again, uh, Forrest, you can talk a little bit about that towards the end. Again, these are all great questions. Uh, so I'll just keep them coming. I just don't want to miss anything. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Now, my next question for the team is, what was the most memorable part about the program? Daniel, you want to start? Yeah, of course. Um, so I think all of us, since we've all mentored, we all have very interesting stories to share. And stories are really powerful. Um, and that's something really unique that all of us have experienced since we've um, been mentoring. So I can sort of start us off with one of the memories I have. So my sophomore summer, I volunteered at Justice High School in their Algebra One credit recovery program. And I was basically acting as a teacher's assistant. So every single day, we'd have like a lecture and then we'd stop and then do worksheets. And then that's when the teacher would walk around the room and I would also help walk around the room and just look over students' shoulders, seeing like, you know, uh, how are they doing? Are they graphing stuff correctly? Um, things like that. So there were these two boys in the back of the room. Um, their names were Carlos and Gustavo, really quiet guys, um, very diligent, always sort of ducking their head down, scribbling away. Um, and the thing was that they weren't very proactive. They were very quiet. They'd much rather work through a problem on their own, even if they're struggling, than ask for help. So I, I definitely noticed that during my time in the classroom, and I felt that their needs were neglected and that they weren't being proactive. They weren't advocating for themselves. And that's where I felt like I could step in and be proactive for them. So... Um, Every day, I would check up on them, ask them how they're doing. Uh, I would be the one grading their quizzes, their worksheets. Um, and through those two weeks, I got to know them really well. And we, we actually are Facebook friends to this very day. So after my two weeks at Justice High School, I had to leave because that's how long my shift was volunteering. And that was before the course actually ended. It was before they took their final before they took the SOL to determine whether or not they would get the Algebra 1 credit they needed to graduate. So fast forward like a couple weeks later, once they took the SOL in their final, um, Carlos actually messaged me on Facebook. He was like, Daniel, in all caps, it was like, Daniel, exclamation point, exclamation point, I passed. And, and then a couple lines later, Gustavo passed too. And it was like, it was honestly such a great moment. Um, you just, you feel so incredibly excited because someone else's success feels like your own success. You become so invested in their progress. You want to see them do well, and you just become so incredibly excited when they achieve their goals. So that's just something that really stuck in my mind. And I'm sure that um, the rest of us mentors can share similar stories. Alice, um, can you share your story about your eyes? <laughs> I feel like this story has been told so many times and been heard by so many people. Um, uh, so I volunteered at the DC Charter School, which was um, mostly a lot of Hispanic and um, African American students. Um, I tutored the K through three classroom for math. Um, so they were really young, really rowdy kids. Um, but there was this one student that was super quiet that always sat at the back of the room and just did her work and she never really reached out to anyone. So I tried um, to interact with her more and she was extremely shy at first. But then um, as the weeks progressed, 
I was able to get closer to her. And then one day when I was helping her tutor, she got really distracted and I was really confused why. And then she asked me, she was like, Alice, like, how do you close your eyes? Like, how do you blink? And I was like, what do you mean? Like, I, I close my eye, I blink like everyone else. And she's like, your eyes are already so small already. I don't get it. And at first I was just kind of taken aback because I've never had anyone ask me such a, it wasn't ignorant because she didn't, it wasn't like she, I don't, I don't think it was ignorant, but it was just such a question out of curiosity because she was, she had never met an Asian person or she had never interacted with someone so close. And um, that kind of really put me into perspective, like, wow, these, these kids have grown up in such a different environment than I have, um, but we're able to kind of meet through this mentoring program, and I was able to help her with her studies and kind of interact with her and talk to her and form a relationship with her. And eventually, I think, like, um, when I was leaving the program and I told her I wouldn't come back, she was devastated, and I was devastated as well, but it was kind of like, being able to form this relationship with her and then realizing that, wow, she asked me this one question that I never thought I would get asked in my life um, that really stood out to me for this program. Yeah. And, and I think because of your story, I think you actually, you made us realize that this is not really, it's not just a mentoring or tutoring program. It's a cross-cultural communication program, right? Because like you mentioned, for many of these students, they had never interacted with Asians prior to this, this experience. Um, so, so that's why I think we're really doing um, a really good thing for the community. I mean, for us, right? So again, we're branching outside of our bubble, but then they're also branching outside of their bubble to meet cool Asian kids like you guys. So yeah, thank you for the story. Uh, Sohan, I know you have one from the uh, homeless shelter. All right, so I guess I'll share that one. Um, so first, I guess I'll start out with saying that last year was my first year volunteering with Branch Out. And um, uh, most of it was because I was new to the area and I hadn't really um, gotten to know too many people, but I was given the chance by Dr. Wu um, and the leadership team from last year to lead a team uh, at Patrick Henry in August. And um, it was a really good experience. I mean, I, I never thought that I would get to do such a thing um, and lead my own team, but you know, it happened and I was really excited because the kids at Patrick Henry, I mean, I really love them so much and um, had a really fun time interacting with them. Um, so let me just start by saying that one day I was at the center and there were these girls, um, they were all sisters. So there were three, there were three girls who were sisters and um, I mean, I had, they were all really fun and I had fun talking to them. But one day um, I decided to wear my glasses to the homeless shelter, which I don't normally do. So I just out of curiosity, I asked one of them. Uh, her name was Vanessa. Oh, oh, her name was Veronica. Her name was Veronica. Um, and I asked her, uh, I said, hey, do you think I look better with my glasses on or without my glasses on? And then um, her response really shook me. She said, um, I think you look beautiful, uh, no matter what you wear. And I think that response just kind of, it, it was it was really shocking because these kids um, at the homeless shelter, they don't have a set home. So what I mean by that is that um, like every few weeks, they shift to a new homeless shelter. So they're never really settled and um, they're always worried about, you know, getting the next meal or, um, you know, when their parents will come back to pick them up. And I think that, um, you know, her response really told me that even though these kids are in this situation where they're unsure about their life condition, they still are so excited to learn and um, they're so positive. And I think that a big part of our program is to have our mentors interact with these kids and see that there's so much more to the world um, and we can learn so much more about other people as well. Yeah, great story. Um, so now the next question I'm gonna ask is, how did the skills and experience help you in college? And, and I think Eric kind of answered that question. Um, but Eric, can you share a little bit with the audience about what you shared last time with us, like about how you applied to this club and then needed some kind of experience and because you got 
can you you know the story right yeah of course um i think so in college uh right now i'm part of a club called h pair which is um basically it connects young leaders of the world especially in asia and other emerging countries with the current leaders and so every year we bring over a thousand delegates from over 70 countries to Harvard campus as well as a uh, city in Asia um, where they meet um, people like the general secretary of the UN Isn't that what the or the um, or, or, or many famous researchers and professors um, and I think going through our process in that club there's a lot of different positions and it's very similar to a lot of things that we've done and branch out with hosting conferences um, with organizing different um, delegates and, and people um, helping um, um, trying to find these delegates as well as that recruitment process um, and kind of managing these this week-long program every year and I think the biggest takeaway um, from branch out that helped with that is again kind of that like professional mindset and being able to be to step up to the plate um, when something really matters um, because uh, these clubs at school often are around like 30 to 40 people, um, not too dissimilar from the branch out size and a lot of different like um, volunteering areas um, and, and sectors. And it's again, like if you see something um, happening like one certain day, um, for example, in branch out, if you see a student struggling, um, it's not, you can't just pass it on to another volunteer and say, hey, how about you like help that student? It's you have to take the onus on yourself to kind of take that opportunity to teach them. And um, kind of similar to that, like that's what I see all the time in clubs where there's, there's little things um, where, you know, like there might be a speaker who's trying to find a room um, or uh, we're trying to get a sponsor um, and we need to draft an email in five minutes. And it's like these little things that pile up where people need to step up to the plate constantly and always produce like quality work. And I think that's um, that mindset of just being present and, and branch out. Um, having that experience has really helped me. And My uh, one down thing down that down. reminds me of like all these experiences, all the amazing stories um, that Daniel and Alice and Sohan and everyone else um, talked about was um, one of my favorite quotes by Steve Jobs, where um, this is a quote from his Stanford address, um, graduation address where he said that you can't connect the dots looking forward, you can only connect them looking backwards. So you have to trust that the dots will somehow connect in the future. And I think um, for that, I think Branch Out was a great experience because um, I trust that, that you have to trust that Branch Out is a great opportunity to have this potential of these amazing experiences. You can't chart your process. You can't say, oh, in, on June 20th of this year, I'm gonna go to Branch Out and then I'm gonna meet like a student and then my life will be changed. Um, I'll have like some amazing story to tell someone. You can't do that. No one can tell you um, that's gonna happen. But I can guarantee you, like if you go through this branch of experience, you're going to take away a lot of amazing memories. And that looking back on life, you're gonna be like, oh, hey, that's where I started realizing that it's important to like diversify my friends and, and to like branch out to different cultures and to understand other people. And that later on affects something else. And I think, in my life, I've often looked back on my like experiences with Branch Out and saw like the planting of the seeds of of so many different things I love doing now because of experiences that I just randomly did because it was fun to do at the time. Yeah, great, great information. Um, so like TJ, we know it's what 70% Asian, but at Harvard, it's about 24, 25% Asian. Um, so it's important to branch out. And then Dharmuth, um, Daniel, you want to talk a little bit about your experience, maybe things you have gained from Branch Out? A skill? Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah, of course. Um, so I guess to kind of go off of what Eric, or just kind of a statistic, yeah. So Dartmouth is 15% Asian American. So I just wanted to throw that out there. Um, yeah, so. I think a lot about my time at Branch Out. Um, and like Eric was saying, it's really interesting how when you look back, that's when you can sort of connect the dots and say like, this is what led me to where I am today. And you can't really do that for the future. So thank you for sharing that, Eric. That was definitely really cool. Um, 
so I remember mentioning earlier my three sort of big takeaways from Branch Out, my time at Branch Out, and I think I'll just share them with everyone because I think it's really relevant to my time at college so far and will also be relevant to my time post-college, whatever I decide to do. Um, so I think one of the biggest things that I developed through Branch Out was communication skills and confidence. So I am by nature a <laughs> pretty shy person. Um, I only speak, well, I, I still am, but I'm better now. Um, I used to only speak when spoken to. I didn't really raise my hand that much. I would much rather just hang out in the background. Um, so Branch Out gave me so many opportunities to speak publicly at training events, um, at the UCA convention, promoting Branch Out, and also in a lot of one-on-one -on -one settings. So with FCPS administrators, setting up next year's program, with high school students, um, tutoring with middle school and elementary school students. Communication is just so incredibly important, regardless of what you end up doing in your life. If you do research, you have to apply for grants. Um, if you're interested in medicine, you have to be able to communicate information well to your patients in language that they can understand. Law, business, computer science, I'm just throwing stuff out there, but Every single field requires some sort of communication and teamwork and team building. So that's definitely a huge part um, of my experience at Branch Out. And my second takeaway is sort of stepping outside my bubble. We were getting at this earlier. Um, so I grew up in Northern Virginia. And of course, as you all know, <laughs> I went to TJ, 70% Asian American students, and there just wasn't a lot of diversity in terms of my friend group as well as the thinking that I was surrounded with. Um, and the students you work with at Branch Out are primarily, as Alice was saying earlier, Hispanic, African-American students, and white students. Um, and they all have just such different cultures and backgrounds from you and they just think so differently than you do. And you realize how many things you've taken for granted. And it's just so important to be exposed to these different cultures and backgrounds sooner rather than later. Um, waiting to, till college to finally meet people different than you, like that might be a little late. Um, so it's just so important to be exposed to different people early on. And I guess I think my last uh, big takeaway from Branch Out is the importance of reflection because I know since I'm speaking to an audience of primarily TJ parents and TJ students, it's just really easy to go through your time at TJ hustling from one thing to the next. It's like biology, chemistry, physics, computer science, senior research labs, and then the summers are crammed with like summer school, internships, and it's just like, ah, crazy stuff going on. Um, and you spend so much of your time planning and looking forward, there's not really much time spent looking back and reflecting on how you've changed, how your motivations have changed, what your interests have changed, you know, asking yourself, how did I behave before this happened? How did I behave after this happened? What did I learn? Um, and that's in the short term, that's really important for when everyone applies for college. Um, the common application, supplemental essays, you, you need to be able to give a compelling argument saying, this is why I would fit at this school. This is why I would, or this is how I would take advantage of this school's resources. Um, and even beyond that, to internships, to jobs, um, for graduate school, you have to be able to have a compelling why. You have to look inside of yourself and say, or look, look inside of yourself and reflect on your experiences and be able to sort of connect the dots and say like, this is why. So for example, like, for medical school, the big question is, why do you want to become a doctor? You have to be able to answer that question in a compelling manner in order to get into medical school and also to kind of gain clarity in knowing this is what I want to do for the rest of my life. Because medical school is a big commitment. It's like, it's a decade of schooling. That's a lot of time. You have to be sure you know what you're getting yourself into beforehand. So those are kind of my three big takeaways from Branch Out. Um, to kind of summarize and reiterate them again, they were communication and confidence, stepping outside of the bubble, and also reflection. So I hope 
those things are helpful. Thank you, Daniel. Um, <laughs> you know, I, we get feedback from parents saying that branch child leaders or branch child students are very, they're great presenters. <laughs> and I guess, you know, Daniel and Eric, you guys, yeah, I think you really showcased that today. Uh, and of course, all, all other leaders who are here today. So um, I'm gonna throw this question out to anybody who wants to answer um, on our team. So basically, you know, we get, we get it, right? Branch out, parents say, oh, I get it, Branch out is a great program. But now my kid just doesn't want to join. Like he's not interested in leadership and service. Okay, team, how should we help our parents here? How should we help them convince their kid to join Branch Out? Uh, for me, I think as like someone who wasn't very you know proactive in leadership as a freshman, um, of course, like respect the child's decision. Uh, whatever the child, if the child is truly passionate about not being a leader, um, they might have their reasons. But still, like having an opportunity to practice leadership is very important. Practice communication is super important. Working with other people, working with strangers, uh, is very important later in life. Um, especially like if you want to progress further into management in different businesses, if you want to progress further in uh, like different innovations or different projects, you have to have that team leader, uh, team leader experience, team leader uh, aspect that you you had to got it over. And also, Brenta is just like a controlled environment where um, you're given an opportunity to work with other people. You're given an opportunity to. Uh, practice your communication and leadership skills on your own and in like a very nice and secure environment there are basically no risks and um it's like an opportunity that you should probably take you know, just try it out uh it's something that um even if you don't think that you got anything out of it or like anything significant it's still a very good opportunity to practice all of these communication and leadership skills um i have to say like uh like my experience at Branch Out and also expanding later on into like being a leader in different projects has helped me a lot in school as well. Uh, being a, you know, a school project leader or a school club leader. Um, you know, I do Mario and as well and uh, a lot of communication and uh, cares charisma is needed in Mario and that I can easily practice in Branch Out as well. Um, I also help with other, other, other clubs such as Hack TJ and all that where we have to work with administration, we have to work with different sponsors. All of these things uh, are connected to the skills that I learned to branch out. So it's something that like, it's, it seems like a small volunteer thing, but in the scope of it, branch out has branched out to a lot of different places, a lot of different administrations, and it's something that is worth the while doing. So I guess maybe if um your child has a friend, maybe, right? Sometimes I, th I think for us, you were able to convince uh, a few of your friends to join, right? So, um, you know, if this parent, like you're really struggling, um, maybe we can find some people from TJ to, <laughs> to convince your child uh, because they only need to do, do it for one week. That's it. Um, just ask them to try it. Yeah. yeah. Oops. Okay. Um, okay. Anyone else? Uh, Victoria, Sonhan, um, Hannah, Angela, anything you guys want to share or even, even Alice, anything? I mean, like my biggest question for that student would be, how do you know you won't like it unless you try it? Mm -hmm. Right. I think it's really, I think if you're going into something and you don't know, or you're unsure, it should be some, you should really take that leap into trying out something new, right? Because that's what Branch Out is about, being able to take that leap instead of saying, oh, I don't want to be a tutor, I don't want to be a leader. Why not just say, oh, I will try it out first and then see how I feel about it. And I feel like, yeah, that's something that you should consider for your child. Great suggestion. Okay, um, so, I guess we have some photos here. This is from 2018 UCA. We started with 2016 United Chinese American Convention. Um, yeah, we had a great memory there. Um, we had fun. And then also we had 
met a lot of really good people. Someone is giving us the smiley face, uh, whoever that is, thank you, which means you really enjoyed uh, our workshop. So um, here is a summary of, I guess, Branch Out. We, are, we have received a few awards already. Um, as mentioned, you know, we started out with 20 students. Now we have 150 students from 40 different schools and what, seven different counties. Um, we have this amazing student leadership team. Whoever wants to participate, you know, they should really reach out to us. We started out with, um, you know, one chapter, but now we have the Howard County chapter. We give out congressional and presidential awards. We have these Ivy, you know, Stanford related alumni events where um, branch house students will get to meet professionals and adults. And of course we have our branch out innovator team that's doing a great job. And then our latest is our global concert. Um, yeah, these are just a lot of fun pictures and I'm gonna try and see if we can, I can play the branch out video for, for you guys. Um, open link. bring us back. So I know um, we still have to answer a few questions from the audience regarding our plan for the summer and how do we join. So Forrest, do you want to talk a little bit about our plan for the summer? Uh, yeah, so um, for right now, uh, our right, right now we still are continuing our plans for in-person mentoring as well and uh, until like further we see how the situation unfolds. Um, so uh, for in-person mentoring, we'll just uh, apply to the same place. There will be the same application, same interview process. The interview process will be online now because um, we're all social distancing. Uh, besides that, um, if things you know go awry and we have to stay inside for the rest of summer, we're thinking of expanding our online uh, tutoring program uh, to those same facilities or to other facilities uh, for students to mentor. So instead of you know, being in person to mentor and guide students, we'll have them online through uh, different uh, online communication platforms to uh, guide the students and mentor the students. Great, uh, Victoria, do you want to share a little bit about how they can join us? Yeah, sure, okay, so um, I'll just send some information in the chat. So if you want to apply, go to our website, which is on the PowerPoint, and you'll be able to find where you can apply for um, Branch Out, Innovator, and all that stuff, and you can find more information about us. Um, you can also visit our Instagram or Facebook to find more information about what we have previously done or what we currently are offering. So our Instagram is Branch Out Veritas, and our Facebook is Veritas Education Leaders. And if you have any other questions, you can always email us at velbranchout at gmail.com. 